Hi everybody, um, so this set of videos is meant to be a reference for you to go back and check up on um, anything that you might have missed from class. So I'm going to go ahead and start with searching for SketchUp. This is how you would get into SketchUp to start. I'm going to go to SketchUp Free, which is down here. After that, start modeling. And then for me, it takes me to this loading screen. That's completely normal. Um, if you have yet to sign up for a SketchUp account, you're going to have to do that. And you can do that with your school email account. But after that, you just go to start modeling. And this is the basic screen. OK, so let's talk about moving around in this environment. If you have a mouse, you can click on the center mouse wheel and that allows you to orbit. So think about orbiting around the sun like you would be the earth. If you hold down the shift key on your keyboard and then hit the center mouse wheel, that allows you to pan. Pan is basically moving back and forth. If you scroll up on the mouse wheel, you zoom in. And if you scroll out or down, you zoom out. If you don't have a mouse, things are a little bit more complicated, but you can still do them. You can go over here to our option on the very bottom of our options list right here. Click Orbit. Now I'm switching over to my mouse pad, or not my mouse pad, my um, trackpad. Click once, move it to the left, move it to the right. If I go down here and select my pan option, click once move it to the left, move it to the right. If I have two fingers down on the trackpad, I can move those fingers up on the trackpad and that zooms in. And then if I move those fingers back, it zooms out. So those are the basics for navigating this space. Another handy option is if you go down here to zoom window, you can create a new window and that will zoom you in to whatever is closest to what you are able to tell the computer to do. Okay, so let's talk about how we are going to basically make this shipping container, which is going to be your first assignment. Here we have a shipping container. And if you go to classroom, and I need to switch my account. Let's say you are in period one. In period one, I've uploaded a whole bunch of different documents for you to follow along with. And one of those is the rectangular dimensions for our initial shipping container. Here you can see a hash mark that says from this distance to this distance that corresponds to the shipping container side. That dimension is 40 feet. It's eight feet wide and nine foot six tall. So now going back over to SketchUp, we're going to start by basically just building that rectangle. I'm going to go over here to my line tool. And you can see that if I move the line in that direction, the line is showing up as green. Whereas if I go at a different angle, it's showing up as black. When the line is green, I know that it is parallel to this line right here. That's going to be super important moving forward in terms of keeping your drawing organized. You can also see down here in the right uh, bottom left or bottom right corner, excuse me, that, that is telling me the dimension of what my line is going to be if I click twice. I already know, thanks to this document right here, that that dimension is going to be 40 feet. So instead of trying to guess and get it as close to 40 feet as I possibly could come, I'm just going to type in 40 and then apostrophe to let SketchUp know that I'm trying to uh, tell it 40 feet. And then I hit enter. So that's step one. The red line, just like the green line, is parallel to this line down here. We also know that it's perpendicular to the green line. We know that that is going to be eight. <coughs> Excuse me. So I type in eight, apostrophe, enter. Now, as I'm sure you can guess, blue is going in the upward direction 
and we know that that is going to be nine foot six inches. It's important that you don't put a space between nine foot and six inches because otherwise SketchUp is going to have a hard time reading what it is you're trying to tell it. So from there I hit enter and I'm going to go back to my arrow cursor. Now I have what are known as reference lines and that'll come into play right now. I'm going to go over here. I could make this rectangle with the line tool but it's faster if I use my rectangle tool. Here you can see we have a whole bunch of different shapes that we could possibly create. I'm going to start my rectangle here, end it there, and now you can see that this shape has shown up as blue. I can now manipulate that shape. When I select it, the computer is basically asking me, is this the shape that you want to manipulate? Or the face that you want to manipulate? And it's asking me that by putting these blue dots. When I select an object, it turns it blue in one way or another. And that's the computer asking, is this what you really want to do? So now I'm going to introduce our next tool. I have to deselect that. So I click anywhere on screen. And I'm going to go to push pull. When I mouse over this surface, it shows those blue dots again, asking me, is this what you want to manipulate? So I say yes by clicking. And then I'm going to snap to that green dot. You can snap to any height you want which is why we did the reference lines to begin with. And now I've created that. I know that this dimension is 40 feet, that dimension is eight, and that is nine foot six. If I wanted to check that, I could go over here to my tape measure tool and I could say, okay, from here to here, and you'll be able to see the dimension down there, I know that that's 40 feet. From there to there, I know that that's nine foot six. And from there to there, eight feet. So that's a good way to check. So that's gonna be lesson one.